Hello fellow makeup lovers, how are you guys doing today? So I am so excited for this video because we're going to be testing out the new Pastel Pup palette from Menagerie Cosmetics. I just got this in the mail today and I cannot wait to get it on my eyes. This was definitely one of those orders where I was obsessively stalking my tracking. I also picked up some of their trifoil shadows. So in today's video, I'm going to quickly give you some information on the products. I'm going to do some swatches, an eye look, and then at the end I'm also going to do some comparisons between this and some of the other Menagerie palettes just in case you're curious about their other their pastel shades, how they look against each other, and then I'll also just show this and give my quick thoughts compared to the Shroud Cosmetics Creepy Cute palette because I know you guys were interested in that, but I think I'm going to do a full separate video comparing the two just because I don't want to try and squeeze too much information in this video and make it super long, so we're just going to focus on trying these new products. So I have the Pastel Pup palette here, and it comes in this really cute little pastel packaging. All of the ingredients are listed on the back. It also says it's talc-free, cruelty-free, and vegan. It has a net weight of 24 grams and they also have, I don't know if they've put this on their other palettes, but it says if staining occurs, we recommend using coconut oil or tea tree oil soap for removal. So it's nice they have that little part about staining because Menagerie shadows do tend to stain on me. The inside is absolutely adorable. So here's what the cover looks like. This is their first palette that is portrait rather than landscape because all of their other palettes open like this and the names are on the bottoms of the shadows there. It again has a really, really nice weight just like all the Menagerie palettes palettes do which makes it feel super high quality it has the <laughs> seal of approval so the inside does have a decent size mirror but I really love this packaging because you can fold it all the way back which I think makes it super super convenient so here is all of the shades there's a ton of pastel matte options purples pinks orange yellow green blues and then there is a white and a black. And then there's just one metallic shade here called Snowball. I believe that's considered to be a trefoil finish and you can purchase that one individually, which is the same formula as the other three that came out with the palette. So the palette retails for $36 and the trefoil single shadows retail for $6 each. I did purchase these myself. I also just wanted to take a moment to discuss their processing time because I heard of some complaints and it is clearly stated on their website that it takes three to seven working days to process an order and that does not include include weekends. They also have on the front page that they are experiencing more processing delays because of the virus and that is completely outside of their hands. I really don't want to seem like I'm being extra harsh or judgy or anything. You guys know I love small brands. I have a lot of compassion for them. I definitely recommend before you make an order from anywhere that you check their policies just so you can be an informed consumer. But let's go ahead and jump on into the fun part now. Okay, jumping right on into some swatches. We're going to start off with Belly Slide, which is a really beautiful lavender. I mean, dang, the pigmentation feels really good. I can see some kickback right off the bat, but I personally really like the softness of Menagerie's formula. It can be a little bit messy, but it's so easy to blend and it's just so beautiful on the eyes. We have the shade Cuddle, which is a pink, a baby pink pastel. Super pretty. The shade Snack, what we're going to be looking like after using this palette. <laughs> Oh wow, that's like a coral pastel. That's actually pretty unique. I don't know if I have anything else like that one. Ooh. Okay, so that's swatching a little choppy. They feel good though. Like I like the texture, the way they feel in the pan. But pastels can be a little tricky. I'm gonna go back in and do a second layer on all those just to see how they build. Next we have the shade Fishy, which almost looks like a creamsicle kind of shade. That one is not quite as kickbacky. It feels, it still feels smooth, but it feels a little bit harder. Hmm. Okay, we've got Sunbathe, which is kind of like a neon -y yellow. And then we have Flipper. Oh wow. Yeah, that shade Fishy is super, super light. Okay, again, for these particular shadows, I rarely do this where I sit and double swatch every single shade, but I'm going to do it for these, just so you guys can really see the tones. Okay, next we have Ice Worm. Actually, that one is even more minty. We have Aquatic, which is a really, really pretty blue, and then Ice Cap. Oh, man. I feel like all of these are swatching kind of sheer, which maybe these will stick really well to a primer. I'm not, I'm going to give them the shadow of a doubt until I actually try them. 
but it does make me a little nervous just because I'm already so pale. So if they're like kind of showing up sheer on me, I'm nervous for how they'll show up on deeper skin tones. Now we have the shade Snowball. Such a pretty shade, actually. It looks to be a blue with a little bit of a purple shift. I feel like it feels smoother than a lot of their other metallics because some of their metallic formula can be just a little bit chunky, but that one feels really nice on first touch. And then we have Saddleback, which is a white. Again, kind of looks semi-sheer. And then we have Whisker. Let's see. That doesn't look bad. It's like a decently pigmented black. That white, though, where is the pigment? I feel like the black swatched out kind of looks like a deep gray. But there is the entire palette. I feel like the colors are pretty. Like, I like the options. I'm just excited to get them on my eyes. Okay, let's go ahead and swatch these trefoil shades. All right, first we have the shade Turtle Club really really smooth just picking it up it is so beautiful it's a really beautiful green with a gold shift it actually reminds me of a shadow that I just recently got from uh, Glaminatrix Cosmetics wow that is so pretty and it has blue and green and gold going on this is the shade bunny this one feels not as smooth it's a little bit more chunky to the touch I don't know if you can kind of see that texture. Looks to be a pink with a blue shift. Oh my gosh, that's so pretty. Kind of looks like cotton candy in a single shadow. Oh wow, that is so pretty because I've had pink with blue shift before, but this is like a pastel pink with the blue shift rather than a hot pink. And then here is the shade Chicky. Again, feels a little bit more chunky and it is a, like pastel yellow. I don't really see a shift on that one, but it is a really, really beautiful shade. And then just for the sake of it, because you can buy it individually, I'm going to go ahead and quickly do a swatch of Snowball again, just in comparison with those other trefoil shadows. You can see the shift in Snowball a little bit more there. See that purple? So I already went ahead and primed my eyes with the Anastasia Eye Primer. I'm going to go ahead and start with the shade Sunbathe, and I'm going to start that off on the most inner part of my crease. Oh no. That's so pale. I'm just going to go ahead and tap it on a little bit more. But I'm just going to focus it on this area right here. Just tapping it in. I'm trying to get the most pigmentation possible. Okay, so I feel like I'm able to build that up a bit I'm thinking right off the bat maybe this is one of those formulas you want to go in with a white base first which I normally don't do I think I'm gonna go ahead and take this shade fishy just to see how that performs and I'm picking it up I feel like this is strange for menagerie because normally I feel like with menagerie you're like dip trying to get all the excess off but to actually pick up this shadow I feel like I actually have to swirl my brush in there and I'm gonna go ahead and just lightly blend that through the rest of my crease a little bit higher up it's showing up a tiny bit but it is very very pale I think that could actually be a cute blush shade I think I'm gonna try a little bit more of a dense little crease brush and I'm gonna go into the shade cuddle next this pink that one definitely has a lot more kickback I'm going to pop that on the center of my crease. Then just lightly blending it out. Really like the tone of that one. All right, really quickly, I'm going to go back into my previous brush and just blend the edges of that shadow out. Good news is it's not looking patchy though, it is blending on top of one another. So now I'm gonna go ahead and take the shade Snack and I'm gonna pop that on my outer V. I feel like that's such a pretty shade. It's like a pastel red. Okay, I'm gonna wipe that brush off and then I'm gonna go back into some more of the yellow sunbathe with this smaller brush and just see 
Maybe I can get it to look a little more vibrant, just blending it out. I'm gonna go ahead and take the shade Saddleback, the white, and do something I haven't done in forever just for the sake of trying out this shade. I'm gonna lightly highlight my brow bone. I used to love highlighting my brow bone with a match white. My camera keeps going out of focus, but I'm just kind of patting that on and dragging it down a little bit. I feel like it has decent pigmentation when packed on. I don't want it to look too crazy, so I am gonna go back in with my blending brush over that. This might be what I'm most nervous about, but I'm gonna go ahead and take a little bit of the shade Whisker, that black, and just see if I can deepen up this look a little bit because I think that's like the whole concept of having a black in this palette is you can deepen up the shades and like get more variety. This feels like I'm going against my nature to add a black over pastel, but I'm just gonna add a little bit on a tiny crease brush just to see what it does to this look. Even with my Shroud Cosmetics Creepy Cute palette, I've used the black with that palette like one time. Normally I'll use it for other palettes, but I don't really pair it together very often. Hmm, I feel like I mostly just like lost an entire shade that was over it, so I'm gonna have to go back in with a little bit more of that coral. The black looks kind of like a soft gray, but it is blending okay. I'm a little bit surprised. I thought the black would be a tiny bit more pigmented, just knowing Menagerie's regular formula, but it's kind of softer. I'm going back into the shade Snack with that tiny brush, and I'm just gonna blend over the edge. And I'm gonna take a touch more of the pink cuddle and just refresh that shade as well. I'm gonna go ahead and take some of Whiskers, the black shade, along the lower lash line just to kind of connect. All right, now I'm gonna dip into the blue right here, Aquatic, and I'm gonna pop that on the inner half of the lower lash line. To finish off the look, I am gonna jump into the single shadows I got, so I'm gonna take the shade Bunny now. And I think actually, just because of the chunkiness of this formula and the fact that I already have my face done, I'm gonna start with my NYX Glitter Glue, and I'm gonna pop that all over the lid. And I'm gonna pop that on the middle of the lid. I am getting a bit of fallout. Now I'm gonna take the shade Chicky and I'm gonna pop that on the front. Ooh, goodness, that was intense. I'm gonna pop that on the front. Again, despite using glitter glue, I am getting some fallout. Okay, so to finish off this look, out of curiosity, I'm actually gonna go ahead and dip into some more of Chicky. By this time, I'm gonna grab it on my pencil brush and I am gonna wet it and I'm gonna pop that on my inner corner. All right, to finish off this look, I'm gonna go into my ColourPop Creme Gel Liner in the shade Prance for my waterline. I'm gonna use my Too Faced Bad and Sex Mascara and I'll be right back. All right, for highlighter today, I'm gonna go into my Lethal Cosmetics Wavelength Highlighter in the shade Ionic, which is a really pretty soft pink. For lips, I already applied my Ulta Beauty Juice Infused Lip Oil in the shade Coconut, which is super glossy, so I think I'm actually just gonna go ahead and leave it at that. All right, guys, so this is the finished look with the Pastel Pup Palette, and I have to say, from my first impression, I do feel like there are some pros and cons to this palette. I definitely have to play with this more before I give you guys my full opinion. I think that the actual palette in general is so adorable. I really love the different colors that are offered here. I feel like there's a lot of really, really pretty, fun, unique pastel options. So the color story in general is very appealing to me. I felt like some of the shades were more pigmented than others, especially the yellow shade. I felt like I really, really had to build up. This peachy shade is super light and I have to play with them more. Even the black I didn't find to be like that intense as I thought it would be. I'm pretty sure Legally Black Beauty and Karen Harris are both now on the Menagerie PR list if I remember correctly, so I can't wait to see their swatches and thoughts on this palette, and I'm just super curious to see how other people will like it because I did find them to be a little bit more sheer. From first impression, I do think I still prefer my Creepy Cute palette from Shroud Cosmetics. This is my holy grail. It's such a good pastel formula, so here's what those two look like next to one another so obviously with the pastel pup palette you get a lot more options 
but I just really, really love the Creepy Cute formula, and all of these are available as singles now. If Shroud could do a Creepy Cute number two, that would be amazing. All right, so here it is compared to the Violet Ink palette from Menagerie, and I feel like the only two comparable shades would be those two purples right there, but Jellyfish is a little bit brighter and Belly Slide is more of a true pastel. Here it is compared to the Whale Song palette and there's just one more pastel shade in here which would be this blue right here called Cetacean. And I feel like, I don't know if you can see and add it, we'll add it to this little row of blue here. Cetacean is definitely a lot brighter and a lot more pigmented than Aquatic in the Pastel Pup palette. And then we have the Killer Purr palette and I feel like the two shades that look actually pretty comparable here would be the shade Drought and the shade Sunbathe. They actually look kind of close to one another so I'm going to swatch those. So here is Sunbathe and here is Drought. So they both kind of have lighter pigmentation to them, but they're pretty similar. So here is the Dragon Child palette versus Pastel Pup. And I feel like the only thing super comparable here would be the shade Dragon Child right here next to the shade Ice Worm. And then perhaps the shade Stone Drake next to Belly Slide. So I'm going to go ahead and swatch those. So here is Belly Slide and Stone Drake. Here is Ice Worm and Dragon Child. Here is the Feral palette, which mine looks a little bit different than what they sell now because I have one of the old shades that used to be in this palette in here, but I feel like overall the shades are pretty different. The only thing I could even think to compare would be the pinks, but I feel like it's pretty obvious that Wisteria is a lot brighter, the pink in here, than Cuddle. Alright, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you are not already subscribed to my channel and want to see more indie content from me, definitely make sure to hit that subscribe button and I'll see you in the next video. Bye!